let me address this grace for everybody to appreciate the answer. So in some situations, there are some brokerages that do flat fees and that flat fee will get the homeowner um, certain bells and whistles like the photos and a yard sign. But after that, they're on their own. Now, technically, according to the MLS rules, they may still be considered the listing broker. But if they're not providing additional services, I say that they really their fiduciary responsibility here has ended uh, at the time that they've fulfilled what they promised that you paid for. So if a homeowner pays $500 to get signs and to get on MLS or whatever the amount is, their job is done. So I would look at every flat fee broker as, as a FISBO, the homeowner. Um, I wouldn't have a problem pursuing that listing because they've done what they promised to do. They got paid up front and that's the end of their relationship. And a lot of homeowners think that relationship is still there, but it really isn't. Okay. So that's number one. Uh, number two, um, when it comes to explaining when they've had the professional photos and the MLS and all that stuff, my favorite analogy, Grace, to use is the, um, the, the hammer. And, and I'll, have you heard me do the, the hammer technique before, Grace? No, not yet. All right. Here's how it works. If let's say you would say to the homeowner, Mr. And Mrs. Hana Hana, let's pretend that you decide that you're not going to sell your house and, and you're going to stay and you're going to build an extension. And let's say you're going to do it yourself, kind of like how you're selling your house yourself. So you're going to build the extension yourself. So you go to Home Depot to buy some tools. And let's say you got this great hammer. It's it, that you, they are selling there. It's made out of titanium. It, they've used it on space shuttle missions. You know, it's, it's a really expensive tool, right? It's the best hammer you could possibly find. You come home with this really expensive, wonderful hammer and you put it on your kitchen counter. My question to you is this, is the hammer going to jump off your table and start building you an extension? Of course not, because the hammer is a tool and the tool in of itself does not get the job done. You have to pick the hammer up and naturally use it. Well, that's exactly what MLS is. It's a tool. The photos, they're tools. But the tools in of themselves do not sell your home. They have to be used a particular way. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Hanana, you could take their hammer and take the other tools. They take the screwdriver and this and the staple gun, all this stuff, and you can give it to, to two different contractors. You can give it to one contractor that just started doing extensions. They're not licensed, bonded. They're doing it part time because they have another job that, that they do Monday to Friday, nine to five. You know, you're going to get a result. Now, you can take the same hammer and the same toolbox and give it to another contractor who's been doing it for years. They're licensed, they're bonded. They've done so many extensions. As a matter of fact, they wrote the book on how to do extensions on a home. You can take the same tools and get two different results based on the person you give the tools to. Mr. and Ms. Hanna, my company, we wrote the book on how to sell a house in today's crazy market. And this is what I want to do for you. Now, here's another thing, Grace, I would say to the homeowner. If a homeowner is willing to pay that selling broker's commission, there is a couple of problems with this. So let's say they go to purple, uh, blue brick house, whatever the hell they're called. I'm just kidding. I know it's purple bricks. I'm trying to make fun of them. But let's say you get they go to purple bricks and, they, and, 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 and the, they're going to pay the selling broker's commission. Grace, is purple bricks going to negotiate with the selling office? Do they do that? They actually say they do. They do. They do. Yeah. Is it, okay. So, um, all right. So I'm not going to use that technique then. And how much are they charging purple bricks? Um, it's like um, four, $500 up front. And then when you sell the house, that's when you have to pay the remaining $2,500. And by the way, um, another company bought um, the Purple Bricks name in Canada. So they are, technically they are out, by the way. So, but um, yeah, so I would use yeah, that. Listen, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Grace. I would use that. I would search the news on Purple Bricks. Uh, so that way you can actually use that on a listing appointment, show them, listen, they weren't successful before. Somebody bought them for 10 cents on the dollar or whatever they paid. And now they're trying to relive it. But I'm going to tell you something. Here's, here's my question. 
what are they doing f- between the 500 and the other 2,500? What marketing are they doing? She's selling a house for the highest possible price. The model is the marketing that we do and the support we do from, con- from the moment the homeowner hires us to contract. I mean, our value is from, co- from listing to contract. That's where we do all of our work. And by the way, you're not having to pay $500 up front. You pay zero up front. So you don't pay me until I get the job done. But we do all the heavy lifting. Here's the other thing. So my question is, what marketing are they doing? I, I'm going to go back to what I said. I've said a million times. How you get the highest possible price is many. You want to get buyers want the property. How do you get buyers wanting the property is through exposure. And how do you give something most exposure is through the marketing tools. And it's not just the tools, but how you use the tools. You know, if I use the, the, the fishing pole technique again, which I love that one, is if you go out to a, a, the lake and you throw a fishing line out into the lake, you know, you're going to maybe catch a fish after some time. But if you want to if you want to get the best fish, you use a fishing trawler, you throw a net out. That's my company. Mar- our marketing tools are our fishing net out into the ocean with a trawler. Now, just like anything else, the way you use the net, how you use the fishing boat and the trawler and the crew, you got to use it a particular, you got to make sure you're going to the right location. You know, you you can have a great fishing boat with great uh, fishing net and great tools. And if you go to the wrong spot, you're not going to catch anything. My company, we use a fishing net. We've been doing it. Listen, we didn't go bankrupt and have somebody bail us out. We've been doing this for a while. We know what we're doing. Listen, you're gonna get, you get what you pay for. Why would you risk going with a company that's already proven that they don't know what they're doing? Huh. I mean, I wouldn't want to be that experienced. This is the most important asset that you have. 